Good afternoon and welcome to the latest issue of Playprint 21, the weekly video news bulletin for the Australia and New Zealand print industries. This issue is sponsored by Ball & Doggett, Australia's largest supplier of printable materials and press room consumables. Prima Printing has acquired PMI Imageworks, a move that will bring together two of the most successful Melbourne-based personalisation and print-on-demand businesses, and two of the biggest in the country. Prima has bought 100% of PMI, with the deal expected to, with the deal closing on Monday. Now, the two businesses will initially continue to operate independently, uh, with close collaboration, of course, as they work through the Christmas peak. Prima uh, has some 65 staff, PMI around 60. PMI was established by its CEO, Chris Zapris, a decade ago, while Prima was established here in Australia in 2016. Both have established themselves as industry leaders, uh, producing hundreds of personalised products. They produce hundreds, yeah. Prima is part of the Global District Photo Group, uh, companies based in the US, which together with Harrier LLC, based in the UK, uh, forms one of the world's largest digital print fulfilment companies. Uh, Prima has become the largest print-on-demand fulfiller in Australia. Uh, PMI is a market leader in personalised personalized wall art and art prints and home decor, as well as producing photo books, cards and gifts. Uh, it's clear evidence that using new technology uh, to meet a growing need is a winning strategy. And on that note, next week we'll see the Print21 PKN live event, which will see brands, designers and printers come together to understand opportunities in digital packaging print. Uh, we've now firmed up the panel uh, with, that will conclude the session. Uh, the panel will discuss challenges and opportunities and will follow a stellar lineup of speakers. Challenges and opportunities in digitally printed packaging includes a quartet of leaders at the forefront of the fast developing market with Paul Haggett from Opal, Joe Foster from Close the Loop Group, Zadie Jackson from Ball and Doggett and Paul Sinelli from EFI. All taking part uh, is the final part of the half day session. Uh, which uh, look, focuses on digitally printed packaging uh, and get, has a lineup of, of speakers giving presentations, brands and print service providers. They'll share how they've benefited from digitally printed packaging, uh, that's in the case of brands, and from printers uh, what they've been able to offer, what they are able to offer brands. Uh, print 21 PKN Live Amplify and Engage takes place Wednesday 9th of November at the State Library of Victoria. Uh, go to print21.com.au forward slash live for full details and to book your tickets. In other news, Alf Holmes, former managing director of the Collapse High Grade Group of uh, form cutting companies, also based in Melbourne, uh, has been disqualified from being a director of any business for the next five years by ASIC. Uh, the corporate watchdog says it's taken strong at the strong action because it says Holmes lodged false documents with it, backdated a personal lo loan to the name of one of the companies, failed to play, pay employees super, and failed to keep adequate records. High grade supplied the printing and packaging industry uh, with tooling for form cutting. The group hit the wall in spectacular fashion four years ago, going down owing $6.6 million to creditors, including one and a half million to the ATO. 50 staff lost their jobs. The new digital outdoor street furniture in Sydney, uh, is, uh, which is popping up all over the place, is causing uproar in the community, forcing the Lord Mayor Clover Moore to backtrack on her earlier supportive comments. Uh, and pause 82 further signage assets from uh, being deployed. This is part of the 10 year tender from QMS. Residents, commuters, uh, and some businesses are complaining the new assets, almost all of which are digital, are blocking walkways and causing eyesores. Uh, the perception of too many and too intrusive uh, new installations has been exacerbated actually by Telstra installing its own digital signage in place of its phone boxes or on them. Um, the reimagined uh, QMS screens are across 26 square kilometres of Sydney, 33 suburbs. They say they reach 2.6 million people a week, uh, which will be uh, two thirds of them live across Greater Sydney. The network includes a newly designed suite of bus shelters, kiosks, 20 new public, new public toilets, 780 benches, 670 bins. Uh, they replace the current furniture, uh, most of which have been in place for 10 years. Um, the pushback against digital out-of-home assets in Sydney comes as city residents around the world actually uh, are beginning to challenge the preponderance of outdoor advertising in their living and working environments uh, and it's threatening a multi-billion dollar industry. In Australia alone the outdoor sector is now worth approaching a billion dollars, it's almost back to pre-pandemic levels. A third of $375 million of that is spent on print. Not always on the streets, but much is. Uh, residents and commuters are now speaking out against the intrusion of, uh, intrusion of corporate sales messages onto their cities. 
Until now, outdoor advertising has had a free run. Print advertising uh, hasn't caused the same level of concern, but now a lot of digital advertising is going in. Um, the residents and the commuters are uh, pushing back against it. And it's, the, it's that rapid growth of digital, now 62% in Australia, which is causing the problems. Um, it's, uh, uh, well, it's proved the catalyst for people to push back. And around the world, in fact, on this story, Brazil's largest city, Sao Paulo, has banned all billboards as a result, taking 15,000 out of action. Uh, UK, the UK activist group, Ad Free Cities, that's piling on the pressure on authorities to take all ads off the street. Uh, some activist groups are taking matters into their own hands, and vandalising or covering up outdoor media. Uh, big European cities are starting to ban outdoor advertising, as well as the one in Sao Paulo, Grenoble in France, Amsterdam, Bristol in England. Uh, so it's a, an interesting story and one that threatens what's been an unrivaled growth uh, sector for the last 20 years. That's it for this week's issue of Playprint 21. Thanks to our sponsor, Ball and Doggett. This is Wayne Robinson, editor of Print 21, uh, signing off. Uh, and don't forget, go to print21.com.au forward slash live uh, to sign up and to uh, come to the uh, live event next Wednesday, 9th of October at the State Library in Melbourne.